Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be doing a little video over the Werewolf Tornado Druid build. This build has just recently been moved to the S tier on max roll for an obvious reason. It's become very, very strong, and a lot of people have continued to use it in the end game in Diablo 4. Whether you're level 50 or level 100, you're going to be needing it in the Nightmare Dungeons, Tree of Whispers, Hell Tides, Farming the PvP Zone, and World Boss Kills. The higher tier builds are able to power level while progressing through these world tiers. Low tier builds may only excel in specific activities, but the Werewolf Tornado Druid build is definitely not a low tier build. I'll tell you that. It's definitely one of the strongest now after we've seen it move to the S tier on max roll. We have a great little guide by TO1904. He talks a little bit about what are the strengths and weaknesses. So first off, it's simple to play. It's ranged combat, massive area effect, and it has a strong single target damage. But it is fairly squishy, and there is no active mobility skills, and it relies on lucky hit procs. It is also weak to the suppressor elite affix. So there are some, really some solid strengths, but there are weaknesses like any other build as well. So as we go through this, I want to talk a little bit about the skills first. This is going to be the most important part, 58 points specifically that you have to use on your druid. So we are going to start off with the Storm Strike. We're going to take that to rank 1 of 5, take Enhanced Storm Strike as well as Fierce Storm Strike. Next up, we have the Tornado, and it is our main source of damage. It is going to send out 1 to 2 little twisters that path somewhat randomly in the direction you aim. They deal physical damage, and periodically, while active, once you have the Storm Chasers aspect, they seek out enemies to destroy, and they alleviate the resource problem. Combine Tempest Roar with Grizzly Rage and the Dire Wolf's aspect. I will say, guys, if you don't have the Dire Wolf's aspect yet, you can't really use this build at all. So make sure you have this aspect before getting involved with this build. All right, next up. We do have some passives. We have Heart of the Wild, rank 1 of 3. Wild Impulses, rank 3 of 3. Predatory Instinct, rank 3 of 3. And then we have Digitigrade Gate, rank 3 of 3. Now we have the Preserving Blood Howl as well. And that is going to be rank 5 of 5 on your Blood Howl. And then we're going to take Enhanced Blood Howl. And then we are, like I said, taking Preserving Blood Howl as well. So from there, we are now back to some passives. We have Ancestral Fortitude, rank 1 of 3, and Vigilance, rank 3 of 3. You're going to gain 15% damage reduction for 6 seconds after using a defensive skill, which again, helps so much late game, taking so much less damage from all of this damage reduction we are gaining. Uh, we have Wolves as well. We're going to take this actually rank 1 of 5. And then we're going to take Nature's Reach, rank 3 of 3. And that is a passive again. Now we have Savage Hurricane. This is going to be a huge bonus for us. The Savage Hurricane, we're actually going to be taking Hurricane just to rank 1 of 5. Enhanced Hurricane into, like we said, the Savage Hurricane. And as you can see, it serves multi-purposes here. It has reduced damage of monsters that are in a range. And it increases the damage output of the Grizzly Rage, stacking up in the Critical Strike damage bonus. So a lot of reasons as to why we're taking that rank 1 of 5 and moving it over to the Savage Hurricane. We also have a couple key passives we are going to be taking here. That is going to be the Elemental Exposure, Neurotoxin, Toxic Claws, and Invenom to rank 3 of 3, actually, instead of just the 1 of 3 like the other 3. Um, hopefully that all added up and made sense for you guys, but you guys can look at the actual build guide in today's video. I'll have a link in the description if you are interested. Again, TO1904 did a great job here if you want to look into it farther. We're going to be taking Supreme Grizzly Rage with Grizzly Rage, Supreme Grizzly Rage, and Prime Grizzly Rage as well. So make sure you take all three of these Grizzly Rage ultimate abilities. It is going to help us quite a bit through our journey in the end game. We also have a couple more passives. Again, Defiance, rank 3 of 3. Circle of Life, rank 3 of 3. Renaissance, rank 3 of 3. And then Defensive Posture is going to be rank 1 of 3. And then, of course, the actually only key passive we are able to take is going to be that Perfect Storm. Storm skills, basically, that you cast, grant 1 Spirit, and deal 15% increased damage when damaging a vulnerable immobilized or slowed enemy which works really well with our build and that's exactly why that is going to be the key passive we take in this build guide so now that we've talked about some of the different skills and abilities let's go down and talk a little bit about some of the aspects there's going to be five different aspects you're going to want across your weapons your glove 
and your rings. And you can actually choose and pick and kind of move these around depending on where you want them. But those are going to be the Night Howlers, the Storm Chasers, the Rampaging Werebeast, Accelerating, and of course, Conceited as well. These five, again, through your weapons, your offhand, your gloves, and your two rings, you can have these five slotted anywhere in between those five. Just make sure you have one of each. It's a unique helmet, and your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills. It's huge. It's definitely one of the biggest upgrades you can find when you are looking for those pieces of gear out in the wild. I will say as well, if you don't have Tempest Roar yet or you're still looking for it, you are going to need protecting vigorous or protector as an optional choice until you get your best in slot tempest roar we also have the chest being might which is going to give us more damage reduction we have the pants being temerity which is going to give us a barrier with the effects that heal you beyond 100 life giving you a barrier up to 40 to 80 percent of your maximum life and it lasts for eight seconds a very nice very nice piece of pants here that I like to use on quite a different variety of builds as well. So we have Boots, Ghost Walker, of course. We talked about Ghost Walker and how good it is before in previous videos. While Unstoppable, you're actually going to be able to move for four seconds and gain 10 to 12 while unstoppable and for four seconds after you gain 10 to 25% increased movement speed and can move freely. While unstoppable and for four seconds after, you gain 10 to 25% increased movement speed and can move freely through enemies. And the most important aspect, again, that we talked about is going to be the Dire Wolf's offensive aspect. The Grizzly Rage now shapeshifts you into a Dire Werewolf. As a Dire Werewolf, you gain 15 to 25% movement speed instead of damage reduction and a 30 to 50% spirit cost reduction bonus. In addition, kills heal you for 10% of your maximum life, giving you a ton of of healing in this build and you can also see some of these stat priorities on the right side as we went through this if you guys are interested definitely just pause the video at any point in time and you guys can read a little bit farther into some of the stat priorities on these pieces of gear with the dire wolf's amulet you are going to want ranks to nature's reach ranks to defiance cooldown reduction movement speed storm skill damage and so on from there uh, it also talks about these sockets you're going to want so royal skulls of course on the jewelry and then the royal rubies on the pieces of armor and of course on the weapon the royal sapphire because you are going to do so much crowd control the 12 percent critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies is definitely the option for us as we go even farther through this guide i want to talk a little bit now about the paragon boards because the paragon boards are very very confusing for certain people as there is a lot to learn however it's not too bad and if you take a look here you can see that we start off with exploit Exploit is going to be the first socketed glyph, and we're going to take it straight up to Ancestral Guidance as our next board. We're going to take the legendary node Ancestral Guidance here on the bottom left, and we're also going to be taking the Guzzler as our glyph on the top right. From there, we're going to connect it to the Constricting Tendrils, and this is going to be Earth and Sky. So the Constricting Tendrils is something we're actually not even going to go for. It's a legendary node in the middle, but we are going to be taking the Earth and Sky glyph here, and we're going to be connecting it now to Thunderstruck or Spirit. And the Thunderstruck is a legendary node that we are going to take this time. It's going to basically give us an increase in damage to Storm skills. And we are going to be taking the Glyph Socket, like I said, Spirit, which is going to help us quite a bit. From there, we're going to have our very last but not least Paragon Glyph Board. Here we have the Glyph of Human. Human is a very nice one to grab, and we are actually going to ignore the Earthen Devastation Legendary Node on this final Paragon board. But this Paragon board is very easy to follow. All you have to do is rotate a few boards, connect a few things, and add those five glyphs to your board to really see how strong this build can become. In summary, the Tornado Druid is a ranged powerhouse pairing incredible AoE damage at range with constant and consistent single target damage. With this ranged playstyle, you can dive deep into nightmare dungeons. Consistent barrier generation makes you very durable as well. Storm Chaser's aspect makes this build incredibly powerful, utilizing your range and keeping your distance from daring and keeping your distance from dangerous enemies and bosses while stacking tornadoes on them. Tempest Roar is required to turn Storm skills into a Werewolf skill in order to use the Direwolf aspect with Grizzly Rage. 
So keeping this combo up is vital to reduce spirit costs. So thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit more about one of the strongest druid builds in the game currently. It's S tier for a reason. And if you guys have tried this build out or are going to try this build out, definitely let me know how it goes down in the comments below. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you all in the next one.